And joining us now is a very special guest, Professor Devi Sridhar, Chair of Global Public Health at the University of Edinburgh is with us. Appreciate Professor Sridhar uh, for you to take out the time to talk to us. The big question, Professor Sridhar, as you see these cases multiplying in India, we seem to be in the grip of a major second Corona wave. What are your initial thoughts? Any lessons that we could learn from the experience in the United Kingdom in particular? Well, I think the way through this is mass vaccination right now and testing. So really trying to find cases, which you are now finding through your testing systems and then trying to break those chains of transmission, but as well rolling out vaccines as quickly as possible, whether it's AstraZeneca or any of the other vaccines you have access to. Interesting. You seem to be suggesting that vaccinations are the key to bringing uh, a, a COVID wave under control because in Britain, I heard Prime Minister Boris Johnson seemingly suggesting that the lockdown had a greater role in bringing down the caseload even more than vaccinations. Yes, well, in our case, we've had a very severe lockdown for months and that is, I would agree, responsible for the bulk of it. But how are we going to keep it low? while we open up society, it's going to be vaccinations and making sure we don't have people who are passing on the infection and being hospitalized. But the challenge for India is unless you can put in place the economic packages to support people during lockdowns, you don't want the lockdown to be more catastrophic for people than COVID-19 itself. So it's a really tricky balance on how you actually bring in lockdown measures and ensure there's enough financial support for all those who are being affected by the lockdown. Uh, the, the question on vaccinations, which you're raising in a country of the size of India, uh, which is uh, several times the size of the United Kingdom, uh, how do you vaccinate uh, the bulk of the adult population uh, is a huge challenge because at present rates, it would take well over, uh, uh, you know, almost two years if you were to be anywhere close to uh, vaccinating large sections of this adult population. So. Is, is vaccination alone, therefore, in a country of India's size, the real solution, uh, Professor Sridhar? It's a really hard one, but there's little other way through this because what we are seeing is just letting the infection go is pretty much catastrophic. You're seeing, you know, the ambulances piling up, the hospitals getting full, oxygen running out. So what is the alternative? It is much easier for countries with smaller populations. In Scotland, we have only 5.5 million people. So of course we can quickly vaccinate that many people. I mean, the, Amer the United States is doing 4 million people every day. If you have a large population like India's size, it will take time, but there's little other alternative through this crisis because either you know where the virus is gonna continue spreading or you try to drive it down. And the way to drive it down is using your testing, your public health measures, as well as your vaccines. Of course, vaccination, Professor Sridhar, is one part of the challenge. The other is, of course, in ensuring compliance, particularly to restrictions that are put in place. We are having large election rallies in this country, large religious festivals. Do you believe that that's where also governments need to uh, show the will to say, look, this is a year of restraint. This is a year where we will not allow these large public gatherings to take place. That really uh, those in, in, in policy uh, and those in power have to walk the talk. They do, and it's very difficult for them. It's easy for scientists like me, because I don't depend on votes and being popular to say hard messages, which is stay at home, avoid mixing, avoid crowded places, you know, avoid being indoors with those you're not you know, in, in close relations with. But it's very hard for politicians. We had the same thing happen here in Britain with Christmas, a huge holiday in December, where it was hard for you know Prime Minister Boris Johnson to say to people not to meet their families and to mix on Christmas. It's a very difficult message, but politicians have to give it now because why get infected this year when you could survive and get a vaccine in the next 12 to 24 months, which means you could live the rest of your life out. The worry, of course, is that we don't even know whether uh, uh, the vaccines are uh, are strong enough to, to, in a way, immunize us against all those variants out there. Uh, you yourself were quoted as saying that 2021 was the year of the vaccines and the year of the variants. Does that worry you, these multiple variants that are now emerging in India and indeed across the world? Will that elongate this process of recovery from COVID-19? 
Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, we are going to look back at 2020 and say that was the easy part in some ways of the pandemic, the first wave, where many countries did well, including India in the first wave. And we're seeing in 2021 this virus come back with a vengeance with these variants. In England, we've had the B117 variant, which is more transmissible. You're seeing the P1 variant. We're seeing, you know, now I know India has another variant. It is going to get more challenging. And the only way to avoid variants emerging is to suppress more variants emerge, the more replication the virus has. It replicates more, the more it spreads. So the way to stop that is to get the numbers low. We don't have a New Zealand variant or an Australia variant or a Taiwan variant because they don't have the virus circulating. So it doesn't have a chance to change in a way that makes it harder for us to control. You know, you mentioned on more than one occasion today the need for welfare measures. Do you believe, therefore, that that's another lesson perhaps that India needs to learn that while we uh, carry on with restrictions, uh, while we have these perhaps localized lockdowns, you're going to have to protect those who are most vulnerable in income terms to any res a a any restrictions in, uh, in travel, in business uh, uh, that are inevitable during lockdowns. Do you believe that it's, that it's necessary for every country to have a strong welfare package in place? I think so. I mean, I think that's a clear lesson. And the countries that have done better have had stronger social systems. I'm thinking even of the Scandinavian countries, such as Finland and Norway, also in Europe, Denmark. So there is a need when you put in place restrictions that will hurt dam and damage people's livelihoods, or mean they cannot go to work, that you support them adequately to be able to take time off work. And you've seen the United States now under the new President Biden passing, pack, putting through a huge stimulus package to try to support people financially to be able to enable these restrictions. I think it's very difficult if you say to people you have to choose between, you know, staying at home and you won't get COVID, but you're going to lose your income and you can't feed your family or saying to them, you have to go out and expose yourself to COVID, but then you can feed your family. I think most people would choose going to work and taking the risk with COVID. And that's exactly the opposite of what we need right now. We need people to make that choice, but make it financially possible to make that choice. Net, net, how would you uh, see India's performance in the global context? The fact that we are now the second largest country in terms of active cases, we've overtaken Brazil. Is that a cause for alarm? Do you believe that uh, India, in a sense, lowered its guard possibly in 2021 and is paying a price? Uh, or do you believe there's an inevitability to the course which this virus takes? Well, I think it's really difficult for India. I mean, there was a lack. I, I do remember there was a, a relaxation of the sense of is the worst through in India. You've gotten through your first wave. Is that it? Is it over? And we're seeing that that's you can never say that. And it's not just India, to be fair to the government and to you know the people. This is every country in the world. Whenever you think this is over, it comes back with a vengeance in a different way. So even with this pandemic, we don't know if it will end in the next year, if it'll be three or four years, whether this virus will be circulating for the foreseeable future with us. We have to have some humility in the face of an infectious disease and say we try our best with it, but really difficult in the context of India because of the large population. I mean, the number, as we talked about, the millions and millions of people you will have to vaccinate, but also having a large you know, percentage of people who are not able to access you know, economic packages to support themselves, people who are you know, street vendors or working in slums or having businesses that are not gonna get support is really challenging, not having that welfare state support. So it's a challenging thing to do. I don't think anyone for any country is it easy, but there are specific challenges to India also. Professor Sridhar, uh, as always, it's a pleasure talking to you and getting a perspective, a global perspective from you, which is very valuable for India today. Thank you so much for joining me here on the news today. Thank you very much for having me. Hi, everyone. Preeti Chaudhary here. Hope you like this video. For latest news and analysis, like and subscribe to the India Today YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated. Thank you for watching.